first examination report. The first examination report is now called the first statement of objections. Uh, this was introduced by the 2016 amendment. Before the 2016 amendment to the rules, there is a reference to the first statement of objections in the language of section 21. But somehow the rules did not comply with the language of section 21. The rules only after the recent amendment calls the first examination report as the first statement of objections. Till then, till the recent amendment in um, May 2016, uh, the words that were referred to were, were, uh, were the first examination report or the FER. The section 21 has a reference to it that I mentioned and the relevant rule that mentions it now is section 24 capital B3. So what is the FER? Uh, it's important for us to still maintain the old terminology, the first examination report because there's quite a lot of historical reference to the FER, uh, the patent office tends to use that and applicants are also more familiar with it. Uh, they don't call it the first statement of object the, the terminology remains the same. It was just the rule and the function, uh, the, the structure, everything remains the same. So the first examination report or the first statement of objection is the first statement that the patent office issues with regard to a patent application. So till such time, there is no response from the patent office with regard to a person's application. When the patent office issues a response, the response is going to be a technical as well as a substantive response. So in the FER or the first examination report, you would normally expect the patent office to raise which is issues with regard to substantive objections, issues which are in the uh, form of a substantive objection saying it does not comply with say section 3D or say section 3E or it does not comply with, uh, with, the, with uh, it, it does not it is not a patentable subject matter or the patent uh, uh, the subject matter pertains to atomic energy. All these kinds of substantive objections can be raised in the FER. The FER can also raise procedural objections. For instance, a form is not signed by the applicant or the authorization which is the applicant is required to put in place is, has not yet come <clears throat> or some timeline he has to, uh, uh, he has to um, comply with has not been done. So all these procedural objections could also come in the first statement of ob objection. The first statement of objection is issued by the controller under section 24B3. It is done pursuant to an examination. So going through the sequence of processes that happen in the patent office, the application is filed first, then it lies dormant for a time. It is in a state of uh, what you call nothing happens to the application and then it gets published. The published occasion can either be automatic or it can be pursuant to a request. Once it is published, then it is taken up for examination and when it is taken up for examination under section 13 the examiner issues a report to the controller the controller issues the first uh, the report that is issued by the control uh, by the examiner is what forms the first examination report the, the the controller is the one who communicates it but it is based on a report that is prepared by the examiner so this report is prepared by the examiner pursuant to section 12 and 13. Now section 12 as you know deals with the examination of application and section 13 is the search for anticipation. Now what are the kinds of objections that can come in the first statement of objection? We saw that under section 13 there could be issues with regard to anticipation that are raised. There could be uh, issue with regard to prior publication or prior claiming. There could be issues with regard to multiple inventions in which case the controller can ask the, the uh, divisional application to be filed. Uh, there could be issues with regard to post dating of an application, a request has been filed. Uh, there could be procedural requirements as I said and they could also be substantive objections. Now the application is made ready for a grant 
only when it complies with all the requirements under the Patent Act and the rules. And we get this from the language of Section 21. So understand the first statement of objections or the FER, uh, what was earlier called the first examination report, is a document which the Patent Office issues to make the application ready in order for a grant. Now, this is the language which you will find in section 21 as well as in section 43. Section 43 is the uh, section which states that the application has become ready for a grant and only after that the controller can actually grant it. So, the first statement of objection is a document that is issued by the patent office which ensures that the application can be ready for grant. Now, uh, these are in you will find the requirements under section 21 broadly fall into two categories okay those are the the, the requirements which have to be complied uh, the requirements that are imposed by the controller and the requirements that are imposed by the act by the act we mean requirements that have already a time schedule the act and the rules have already prescribed it now, when we talk about the requirements imposed by the controller, we are referring to certain requirements that the controller may impose in the response to the applicant. For instance, an amendment which the controller may ask or a, 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 a reference that the controller may ask the applicant to include. And these are done by the controller in light of the powers vested on the controller under the Act. So, as I said, uh, the first statement of objection is actually a document that prepares the applicant to ready his application uh, for a grant under section 43. So, if you look at the language of section 43, you will see that section 43 mandates two things broadly. It says that the application that, that where an application for a patent has been found to be in order for the grant and either the application has not been refused by the controller by virtue of the power vested upon him which is what I said the restrictions that are imposed by the controller and the application has not been found to be in contravention of any of the provisions of this act that is the restrictions imposed by the act. When these two things are complied with the application can become ready for a grant. So, the first statement of objection or the FER is a document which is issued to ensure that the application reaches a point that is mentioned in section 43. Uh, found to be in order of grant, it is not being refused by the controller and it is not in contravention of the act. Again, it mimics the language of section 21. You can see that there is a relationship between section 43 and section 21 because section 21 mentions when an application will be treated as abandoned and section 43 says when an application will be treated as complete so that it can be granted. So, the mandate under section 43 has to be complied for by an applicant to ensure that a patent is granted. Now, FER is tied to a timeline. Now, you will you'll be able to see the timeline in this, in this slide. First, you have a publication of application under section 11a and once the publication happens on the left hand side you can see the application is open for pre-grant opposition it's open up until the grant then once the publication happens then a request for examination has to be filed if no request for examination is filed on to the right side the application is deemed to have been withdrawn now, if the request is filed under section 11b, then the FER is issued under rule 24b3. Now, the response time given under the act to reply to the FER is 6 months, 6 months from the date of the issue of the first statement of objections. For the sake of convenience, we will be referring to it still as the FER. Once the response come in, then on to the left hand side, if it is in order for grant, the response has taken care of all the objections in the FER, then it moves for publication in respect of grant and the grant is, it is granted and it is published. If it is not in order for a grant pursuant to the FER, then 
the controller can issue a statement saying that these are the objections and call for a hearing under section 15 and he may either refuse or he may either amend or he may grant the patent. So this is a process that results in the grant. This is prosecution uh, in a gist.